Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. Today's rundown is going out to our brand new sponsor, Corey Hall. Thank you so much for supporting us. Here's your rundown. After a few stumbles, DC's Batgirl film is back on track. The troubled film adaptation of the iconic superhero is moving forward with a new creative team. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the movie is now said to be written by screenwriter Christina Hodson, best known for writing the 2016 horror movie Shut In. She's taking over from original writer Joss Whedon, who dropped out earlier this year after he, in his own words, failed to come up with a story that would do the character justice. With Christina Hodson now on board, it means that Warner Brothers and DC aren't giving up on the movie. Batgirl is easily one of the most popular heroes from the DC library, and it's no surprise that the studio is interested in a new female-driven superhero movie following the blockbuster success of Wonder Woman. There's no word yet on who might direct the Batgirl movie or when we might be able to see it. The biggest movie of the year so far won't take too long to jump into your living room. Disney and Marvel have announced that Black Panther will be available to buy digitally on May 8th and will hit Blu-ray a week later on May 15th. It will be available in the usual assortment of different editions, including a 4K Blu-ray and retailer exclusive versions, but unfortunately each will have their own exclusive set of bonus content, so fans who want everything will have to buy several different versions. It's a little surprising that Disney and Marvel don't want to keep Black Panther in theaters a bit longer before bringing it home. It's still raking in the dough and recently beat Titanic to become the third biggest movie of all time at the domestic box office, if you don't adjust for inflation, that is. You show off. The way it is now, Black Panther will be getting out of theaters just in time for the arrival of the next Marvel outing, Avengers Infinity War. That lands on April 25th. Wow. And despite Black Panther breaking so many records, hit movies don't have anything on hit video games. Rockstar's Grand Theft Auto V is reportedly the most successful entertainment release ever, beating out not just other video games, but every movie as well. That's according to the industry analysis firm Market Watch. They estimate that since GTA V has sold about 90 million copies since its launch in 2013, the game has earned roughly $6 billion, beating the biggest movies like Star Wars The Force Awakens and Avatar. Even if you account for all the merchandise and home video sales related to those films, GTA V would still eclipse them which is good news for Rockstar and publisher Take-Two and the entire video game industry. This means a video game is the biggest blockbuster of all time, showing the mainstream potential that games can have when they're done right. Take-Two has attributed the lasting success of GTA V to the fact that its multiplayer component, GTA Online, is still being updated with new content, which keeps bringing players back. This means you can expect more and more big titles to adopt a similar games-as-service model, including Rockstar's own Red Dead Redemption 2, which they've already said will include a robust online component. Rockstar is rumored to already be working on the next Grand Theft Auto game, but don't expect to hear anything about that until after Red Dead Redemption 2 arrives this October. It looks like Jason Statham is really going to jump the shark in his next movie. The first trailer for the fishy action movie The Meg has surfaced. The film stars Jason Statham as a Jason Statham type action hero who leads a team of underwater scientists that accidentally awaken a massive prehistoric megalodon shark. As you might expect, plenty of voracious action ensues along with what appears to be a healthy dose of self-aware humor. It's megalodon. He's kidding, right? The film actually finished shooting more than a year ago and was already supposed to have been released in theaters, but distributor Warner Brothers delayed it until this summer, so you'll have to decide for yourself if that's a good omen or a bad one. The Meg devours audiences on August 10th. The next season of Star Trek Discovery has gone fishing and caught a pike. CBS has announced the biggest new addition to the show's cast for its upcoming second season. We'll issue a mild spoiler warning for those who haven't seen the end of season one. The second season will feature Hell on Wheels and Inhuman star Anson Mount as Captain Christopher Pike, who in Star Trek lore was the captain of the USS Enterprise before James T. Kirk took over. The Enterprise was seen briefly at the end of the first season, and since the show takes place about 10 years before the events of the original series, it makes sense that Pike would be in command. The character of Pike first appeared in a two-part episode of the original series, and more recently was played by actor Bruce Greenwood in the J.J. Abrams movies, which take place in an alternate timeline. The fact that they're announcing Anson Mount as the new Pike indicates that his character and the Enterprise herself will play a major role in the new season, but no word yet if Pike's half-Vulcan first officer Spock will appear. The new season of Star Trek Discovery doesn't have a premiere window, but is expected to begin filming soon. With Pokemon making the jump to the Switch this year, Nintendo is bringing a similar franchise to the system. 
Nintendo and Level 5 have announced Yokai Watch 4, the next big game in the monster catching franchise, and it's coming exclusively to the Switch. This makes it the first game in the series made for a console and not the handheld 3DS, with Level 5 previously stating their intention to gravitate away from the 3DS. Yokai Watch 4 is slated to hit Japan later this year, but it's unclear if it will find its way to North America. Although the franchise is huge in its home country, it just hasn't caught on as much in the West, and 2016's Yokai Watch 3 was never released outside of Japan. Japan. There's a chance that Nintendo and Level 5 will want to give the series another try in the West now that it's coming to the Switch, so we'll let you know what happens. The good news is that the Switch doesn't have region locking, so diehard Western fans can import a copy from Japan if they want. Over in the Pokemon franchise, Nintendo has confirmed that they're making a new Pokemon RPG for the Switch, which will be the first game in the main Pokemon series released on a console ever. That arrives before the end of the year. And that wraps us up for the rundown today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new episode. But in the meantime, don't forget to click around and watch some of the other content that we've made. And if you dig it, hit subscribe, that little bell. And if you're so inclined, that sponsorship button too.